everybody! Welcome back <laughs> to the seventh episode of Tales from the Closet! Maybe you're watching this and you are in the closet. Well, we're here to keep you company. Maybe you're outside of the closet, far away, and you don't want to talk about it anymore. Well, too bad. <laughs> That's all we're going to talk about today. Uh, I'm your host, Allie Beardsley. Woo! Today we have... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Thank you. Today we have an amazing show. Uh, if you're watching this uh, on CH2 on YouTube, know that you could have watched this a week earlier if you subscribed to Dropout. That's right. This is a commercial. <laughs> For only $4.99 a month, maybe it's more. $5.99. For only $5.99 a month, <laughs> use promo code DROPOUT TODAY. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. There's no promo code. Listen, I've made a mess of this, and it's uneditable. So, <laughs> uh, no, we have an amazing show. Please uh, follow us on Instagram, and uh, uh, please send in questions. Every now and then we will post an anonymous survey, and you'll see us answer some of those questions later on today. Uh, and so we really appreciate your thoughtful and sweet questions, and I love you. <laughs> okay. Uh, great. Let's kick this off. Uh, up first, we have Sophia. Introduce yourself. Who are you? Um, I'm Sophia. I am an artist based in Los Angeles. <laughs> and um, my pronouns are she, her, and I identify as gay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Woo! Yay! Yeah. Up next. Yep. Hello. My name is John Early. I'm, uh, thank you. I'm a comedian um, based in Los Angeles as well. Uh, and my pronouns are he, him, and I also identify as gay. Mm. All right. Next up. I'm Simone. I'm also based in Los Angeles. I'm a photographer. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm also gay. So, hey. Yay! Look at that. All four of us. Wow. It's crazy. Mm. I sought out to make the show I wish I had when I was young. Mm. And I don't say that to sound bitter. And I know it can. Okay. I mean that in a positive way. You're screaming right now. (laughs) So to be clear. Uh, You're not bitter. I'm not bitter. I'm better. (laughs) <laughs> Don't get bitter, get better. Um, all right. So how the show works is we kind of talk. Sometimes I feel like being in the closet can look different for everybody. For me, very conservative, religious upbringing in the closet. Uh, I've told stories on here about... I had no uh, idea. Yeah, you have no idea about that? <laughs> I Wait, really were you, you were religious, right? Yeah, it, no. No. Me mm. personally somehow managed to not be religious, but my parents were ministers. <laughs> oh my god. We're going to church. But How did that it's happen? huge. Well, they're not they they're they're very thank god. They're very kind of progressive like met mm. in divinity school like in the 70s like mm. <laughs> they're so not that. <laughs> <laughs> but but um but yeah, yeah, they they thankfully like are not evangelical. I mean, it's fine if you are, I guess. Um, <laughs> but uh, for me, they're kind of like pre- uh, progressive, kind of lukewarm, like easy breezy Protestantism. Mm. <laughs> and thankfully, that kind of ease gave me some space to be like, no. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. But I didn't know that about you. Yeah, no, mine was like a very electric guitar like, like conservative mm. yeah. yeah full full Britney yeah. Spears mic yeah. like yeah mm. um and it was just like impossible to be gay I was just mm. like this I can never come out this will never leave my yeah. lips um and yeah I, I feel like I've told this story so many times you, but we can have coffee later okay <laughs> if you, if you want. Yeah, yeah. honestly I'll table that <laughs> um but yeah and the crazy thing is my brother also gay Hundred yeah. percent of my Hell conservative yeah. Christian oh my parents, kids, mm-hmm. gay. Hell yeah, mm-hmm. you're yeah. welcome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> honestly, yep. a gift to you. Um, but yeah, what are some times that you guys felt like, oh wow, I'm uh, different. I might be gay. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I mean, I feel like from a pretty young age, like from middle school, I didn't feel boy crazy, boy obsessed. I didn't feel as pulled in this direction. Mm -hmm. So I felt this need to kind of like force it and feign interest and like just kind of wanted to hang out with my girlfriend. Yeah. Kick it with them. I don't know. It just never felt, it never clicked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So I spend a lot of my time thinking that everyone was gay <laughs> and that mm-hmm. only and everyone had like figured it out like how to like pretend. Oh yeah. <gasps> so I was like wow. like all the boy crazy stuff I would, I like tried that on oh, for yeah. like a time in my life. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, sure. I'll like be like I'm obsessed with Paul and it's like <laughs> right. I'm just taught myself <laughs> just to say totally this very like, disingenuous. Yeah, yeah fully. <laughs> I remember being in like a daycare program. Also, my parents are academics, so mm. I literally like experienced no resistance. Like every morning, yeah. my mom would be like, "So, are you gay?" <laughs> and <laughs> I had a I similar like, story, it, actually. You know what yeah. I mean? And so, yeah. but that was my resistance because it was totally. like, "You're trying to make me," you know. And yeah. so, and then it took it took like longer than most of my religious friends, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. But like when I was in daycare as a kid, like now I'm like, okay, that was a moment. Like I had this friend named Claire and she had these long thick braids and Mm -hmm. I would like literally during nap time I would like take her braid and put it in my mouth (laughs) which I think is honestly one of the first like gayest things I've ever done yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. oh my god I loved her braids yeah I'm obsessed with that like unadulterated kink yeah, it's out there I somewhere. You know, it's oh, like we've all yeah. learned. It's I like, and then I have pink. a whip, and but yeah. it's like, what if I could just do anything? What would I do? Yeah. Oh, would I put well, a braid in my mouth? Probably, yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah, the kinkiest mm-hmm. shit I ever did was as a kid. Yeah, same. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, no. That is what this podcast is about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, that's <laughs> when I knew I was gay. <laughs> yeah. Or that's when I was like, I have a, f- I'm like fully nude, like tied up with my best friend. Like, <laughs> maybe I'm gay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something. Oh my I'm on God. this dock alone. I have yeah. stress. I'm like humping my best friend in a dress, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, something's off. Yeah. I don't, something's I can't. amiss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. Hope that helps. Begging my neighbor to spank me, going, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, like, I feel like in middle school, too, it was always truth or dare. Like, I dare yeah. you to, like, yeah. jump into the pool naked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, the amount of times I pretended to be asleep while, like, people were drawing on my back just to be, like, the attention. Uh, <laughs> like, oh, soft tingle down my spine. Yeah. That's so funny. Makeovers. It's oh, just, yeah. like, women surrounding you with, like, a small brush, oh, like, gosh, brushing your attention. skin. And you're like, oh my god, yeah. I'll you're wear like, makeup. I'll go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll do it. Sure. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Let's see. I, uh, I, th- I had something that I. What was it? I was remembering today, like, because I'm thinking more and more. Like, this is a very like sexuality-driven podcast, mm-hmm. but also in a gender way. I feel very non-binary. Mm-hmm. And uh, my brother and I, we would always be like prototypical like my brother would get like a boy toy for Christmas and I would get mm-hmm. a girl toy and yeah. then we would just like secretly Switch. trade because we mm-hmm. were like yes That's thank amazing. god yeah yeah thank it like god. worked out perfectly mm-hmm. but um <laughs> That's I'm like what is that like what I wonder what was happening mm-hmm. there who because my mom's not that binary of a woman but mm-hmm. I think it was just like safe Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just like the default. It's just our yeah. culture, too. Yeah. I think so, too. Yeah. yeah like, like the yeah. literal toy store is like blue, pink. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I totally. mean, maybe not now, but uh, yeah. yeah. But honestly, maybe still. I have yeah. no idea. Yeah. Thinking of like, because for me, liking like, I want a basketball was like yeah. totally mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. But then when my brother wanted like a ribbon dancer, do you guys <laughs> yeah. remember those? Yeah. He Worse. wanted one so bad. And I had mom, to make my own. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Out of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> I was naked holding a ribbon yes. dance. <laughs> humping my best friend. Um, yeah, no, but then my mom like got one for him, but like hid it in her purse and like... Oh. passed it off secretly so he could still have it but yeah. still like what goes like the shame involved you in your mom it? like yeah. mafia bossing Slipping you him <laughs> yeah. ribbon mm-hmm. it's so crazy sweet. too because like toys are really gendered but also like they have all these dolls you have to take care of mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. it's instilling very <gasps> early psycho. like this motherhood mm-hmm. thing this like mm-hmm. maternal yes. instinct that mm-hmm. like young girls should have from the jump and like yeah. boys totally. don't get Dolls that pee and need to be. F- I mean, everyone yeah. had like a I know. Tamagotchi or whatever, yeah. but like it's totally. No, boys get machine guns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, literally. It's, like, it's totally. crazy. It's yeah. horrifying. It's so crazy. So scary. A machine yeah. gun or a baby? Like, pick your phallus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's gonna be. <laughs> pick your phallus. Sorry, it's a Freud joke. joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The time is now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you get do you feel like your parents when did you come out to your parents? Did they get it? Were they I I literally You guys have the same parents. We have a yeah, we yeah. do. Oh my god. Yeah. No, then you go. 
Well, I mean, like, I feel like my parents, I had a boyfriend in high school, but it was kind of unconvincing. I also just didn't really have him around that much, but like, Mm -hmm. I came out to them my first year of college. So when Mm -hmm. I was like 18, 19. But similar to what you were saying, it was getting to a point where my parents were just like, so Mm -hmm. like, prepping me with these talks of like, you know, like, it's fine, like, whoever it might be, are you seeing anyone? Like, they were just, like, really Mm -hmm. grooming me to just be, like, I'm gay. And, like, Mm -hmm. I was just being so overly, like, oh, no, like, just so avoidant. Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. To a point where it was becoming kind of ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And, like, my dad is so awkward about that stuff. But even he was like, yeah. Like, he was working at a gay church, actually, like, playing the piano. What's a gay church? Exactly. (laughs) He was, like, texting me pictures of him, like, marching at gay pride. And here I am, like, wringing my hands. Like, oh, I just, I couldn't possibly, like, tell them anything. This is not safe. Oh, my God. Like, and it was, you know, so easy. Well, there's also just, like, the general resentment that I feel like, every queer person wakes up into of just like i can't believe i have to do this yeah yeah just like i it, it's so i i was so furious about that and i i'm i like you i was i was very lucky to have parents who were like hinting trying yeah. to get me you know but yeah. like mm-hmm. it was just i was so furious i even had to do it like because it's yeah. such a straight world mm-hmm. so you have yeah. to come out as yeah. other than yeah this, like and yeah. all the time repeatedly mm-hmm. true yeah. constantly and like yeah. also there's such a i always had such trouble with like the kind of tone of the conversation mm-hmm. obviously mm-hmm. like i i feel like i wasn't you're not given many examples i mean this is why this podcast is so great Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, yeah. I think end it there. <laughs> yeah, cut and um, credits roll. I've <laughs> never done credits. Uh, <laughs> but like, I didn't have the only kind of tonal example of coming out is like sitting your family down and like sobbing and Tearful, being like, totally. "Mom, Dad, like mm-hmm. I love you guys mm-hmm. and I'm gay," you know, like, yeah. mm-hmm. or or it's full trauma, you know, yeah. or it's like get out of the house, yeah, you know, totally, yeah. Both, by the way, happen. Both are valid. It's like, totally. but like for someone like me, I needed I, I also I was like actively avoiding the kind of sentimentality of like the South and like religion and like okay, I, you're from Nashville. 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 Wow. So like I you know, I, I I I grew up very resistant to that kind of like schmaltziness and over simplification and of like feelings, you know, and and I turn to like comedy, t- mm-hmm. you know, to give me like another way to be, yeah, you know, totally. another way to like think and feel and like, and like, and so the coming out conversation I al- was always so mm-hmm. limiting and not in my language. Mm-hmm. It just, I was like this level of like, kind of like, <sighs> yeah, yeah. I, like that, that's not me, Hallmark you know, movie. Kind yeah. Of like it would be so nice if like it had gone down like my mom was like, are you dating any boys? And I would have just been like, oh, actually I'm gay. And she'd be like, oh, you know, right, like, yeah. like in a dream world, mm-hmm. yeah. totally. no like stakes or like, yeah. God, you know. I came out last year when Amazing. I was 29. Mm-hmm. And, um, but it was like a slow process, but I was actually, I started coming out like through comedy, like doing, yeah. because it was like, oh, I'm coming into myself as this comedian and this artist. And I was writing bits that I was like, I'm gay. Like, yeah. oh my God, like writing these like dyke bits. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And then I went home to my parents' house and I wasn't even like planning to come out or whatever. Yeah. I was just talking to them and I was in a relationship at the time and I was just like, you know what? You know, they were asking about him and I was like, you know what? I don't even know that that's going to last. And then I was like, and I also don't. And it just started coming like unfurling. Wow. That's amazing. And, and it was fully like, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. sobbing. And, it, and you know, I like don't have that connection with my parents whatsoever, but it yeah. was like a moment like that for us. And then my mom truly, my parents are actors and they're like, I mean, they do other stuff too, but like at their core, they're yeah. actors. Yeah. And um, they were like, that's really nice, honey. You know, and my mom's like, me too. You know, and I like, oh, my like takes the stage, you know? And I was like, okay. You know, I was like, this is actually, and that, but I wanted to be supportive, you know, because coming out's hard. So I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh my amazing. God. You're doing great. Oh you know? Me too. Literal. Oh my yeah. God, yes. Literal. I yeah. can't believe Which you is like told amazing, that. but it was also like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. You yeah. don't have one minute. Yeah. Like, it's true. still a limelight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, sometimes, like, 
you like for me it was like pure avoidance until I absolutely had to say something which yeah, is how I am in most areas <laughs> of my life world. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like I have to be so up against a wall like I I can't yeah so like you it does take some resistance and it's I like think- sometimes if you grow up with parents who are like no, whatever you want. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's hard to like define yourself in total it like is. openness. And a friend of mine says that like religion actually accelerates coming out. Yeah. For you're a lot like of people. so aware. Yeah, of, and you're yeah. being put. You're being like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, that you're like, someone's like, I this feel. is wrong. Yeah, yeah. 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 Versus yeah. like, who know? You know, yeah. you're kind of like floating. Totally. Yeah. It is really interesting that you guys found a lot of that through like writing and comedy. Mm -hmm. I always feel, I get a lot of messages and stuff that are like, I don't know if I'm gay. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, just even the question of that, like Mm -hmm. explore that, write about that or something. Like that will help you. Mm -hmm. I think for me too, I felt like a lot of awkwardness about being queer particularly in high school because I didn't have a ton of examples Mm -hmm. of queer people. Like my like realization experience was like, binge watching the L word. Totally. <laughs> like, totally. I had this boyfriend and he had this older sister, Teresa, <laughs> and she was a dance teacher and she was always like running marathon, like super <gasps> fit. <laughs> and she was gay and she had like every season of the L word on DVD. <gasps> so I would just borrow Teresa's DVDs Hi, and she Teresa. was just uh-huh. so <laughs> Cute. I love Teresa. I love Teresa. Imagine, you know, Teresa knew exactly oh, what was God. happening. She's like, yeah, She's give like, my Hello. brother's girlfriend. Here, my borrow copies. these DVDs, girl. Have fun. Oh, yeah. Wake up. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but it was like, I didn't really, that was like kind of my only window into like, I feel like queer is kind of like more of a recent mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like maybe 10 years ago like it was more like I'm a lesbian or totally like, it was I'm all caricatures like, yeah. yeah totally yeah. So it, was it like literally not... was like queer as folk or the L word yeah. yeah those were like the two that was like the binary mm-hmm. yeah. Of, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and totally. if you didn't look like that or like feel like that like West Hollywood gay you were yeah. just kind of like who am I? Yeah. Like, what is this? And even like those were all kind of on like what were they on HBO? Showtime. They were Showtime. Yeah, I didn't. Can I say that? <laughs> I have Showtime. Yeah. You just got some sponsor money. Oh. <laughs> we should have totals underneath <laughs> their faces. <laughs> anyway, I was drinking a Sprite and no, um, no but uh, I didn't get those channels. So no, all I, I yeah. had were like these sitcom versions of gay, yeah. which was like Home Depot Woman, LOL, <laughs> like Jack from Will and Grace. Right, right. Oh. Yeah. And yeah, I don't think I met like just a sincerely gay person until college. Yeah. And it mm-hmm. it shook me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it shook me. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, it was like my I was like Diane Arbus or Rocky Horror <laughs> or like Robert Maplethorpe. And oh I was just God. like, I don't know this if I'm so this intense. type of gay. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so intense. Yeah. Like it's just like, whoa, like, okay, I got I'm straight. <laughs> I'm straight. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like bondage yeah. leather gay as yeah, your totally, first example. That's totally. kind of how I felt. Like yeah. when I first moved to LA, I was like, okay, I need to go to a gay bar. You know, yeah. I've, I've seen the TV shows. I need yeah. to be sitting at the gay bar with a beer in my hand like this, and I'm gonna meet someone I love. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. and it's like no, and it's just booming club music, and you're like, okay, uh, I'm here alone. When's like, it gonna happen? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Here you go. Yeah. Where did did you guys go out? When you came out much? Or did you go the club route or did you go the political gay route? Did you go the. I do. Uh, That's when you got into politics. Oh, yeah, yeah. that. <laughs> no, thank you. That's when I started running for office. Yeah. We all know um, gay is a gateway political to political. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still running. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I don't. I, I didn't go out enough. Mm. I, I do kind of mourn. Like, like part of my childhood my upbringing was about being like good Mm -hmm. you know like about being like safe and good I'm not gonna Mm -hmm. make any waves you know and and that was what was hard about coming out for me was I felt like coming out did create like a huge wave yeah Mm -hmm. even though my parents were ultimately angels about it and thank god I was very lucky in that regard but I unfortunately like I don't know I never there is always, and I know we like, I've, I've peeked at the questions, okay? I know we have a question about like the delayed adolescence thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, I feel it's like I'm still working through yeah, this kind of like anger of like, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I feel like I, 
still deserve a kind of like mm -hmm. wild exploratory time. Totally. Same. You know? Totally. Yes, that like comes in little like bursts, but like I still totally. haven't done it or something. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The question in question is, let's see, did someone write their name? No, this is an anonymous question. Something I have been dealing with is the arrested development thing or suspended gay adolescence. Living out the rebellious teen years I didn't really get to have when I was in the closet. I'm at the age where a lot of my straight friends want stability and commitment, but I still just want to hook up in the backseat of a car, so I feel a bit of disconnect from other people my age. Have you experienced anything like this? Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would agree. Totally. There's like this kind of like, I don't know, like high school, mm -hmm. like, oh, I just had a bunch of weird sex or something that mm -hmm. I feel like I missed out on. Yeah. Hmm. Not ever having gotten to kiss someone I wanted to kiss until I was mm -hmm. like 24 or, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like for me, I mean, I had those weird experiences in high school, but like with a guy, same. Mm -hmm. so it just didn't really resonate in the same way. And then when I did come out at 19, I had a girlfriend, but then I was like single for a year, and that year could have been so cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that year was not that cool because yeah. I was like feeling kind of awkward about it still. Mm -hmm. I also like think it's super funny because I had an OkCupid profile and I was going on all these dates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like there was interest. There was like mutually expressed interest, but I was like cock blocking myself. Oh, same. Yeah. So I just mm -hmm. like they totally. kept turning mm -hmm. into like, you're my best friend. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it could have been mm -hmm. something like, cute. Let's do this. It could have been yeah. something fun. And like mm -hmm. I kept like my confidence was not there, so I would just like go on these dates and like kind of sabotage it mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. put it in a very like distinctively friend zony mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't having those like wild. I wish I had. I wish I'd yeah. been like, oh, let's do this. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah you. I. I feel like I missed a really like important opportunity in my life to, mm -hmm. and it's not my fault. Um, it is the culture at large. Um, I missed a really incredible opportunity to normalize desire. Mm -hmm, to normalize yeah. like gay desire, mm -hmm, queer desire, mm -hmm. and to normalize being desired. Totally. And like I still feel angry about that. Oh, totally. Yeah. Like I, like I, you know, I, I, I also one one thing I did to try to be like so much of my early kind of identity, and I don't mean my last name, I mean like <laughs> my, early my brand. Yes. Um, my, my, the identity of my youth was like built on this like, what I didn't realize then was a kind of gay shame, which was mm -hmm. like, I actually, I don't know, I, do, I just, I'm not, I'm kind of clubbing gay. I'm not, yeah. you know, I don't, I'm not mm -hmm. that kind of gay. Mm -hmm. I actually just like, weirdly want kids yeah yeah <laughs> you know i weirdly want just kind of cozy home cozy. domestic like mm -hmm. and you know part of that is authentic i do mm -hmm. love like cooking so if i know this about me <laughs> you know I, I like i i do love like kind of domestic fantasy too but mm -hmm. and like and i embrace that and own it but then another part of me knows that like the origins of that is from kind of needing to be a non-threatening mm -hmm. gay person. Interesting. Like kind of neutering mm -hmm. yourself yeah. almost and just being very like to be vanilla like, and safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in a certain, yeah. yeah, and to be like, I actually like, I want, like there's something so sinister that I've kind of realized mm -hmm. about that, this like desire for kids. It's mm -hmm. like, it wasn't organic. It was like, mm -hmm. it was a way of, mm -hmm. it's like, I'm like, I'm realizing like the origins of that are like, literally the subtext is like, I'm not a pedophile. You want to conform. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. You know what I mean? Like yeah. because of the myth that, right. you know, totally. gay, yeah. gay people are pedophiles. Yeah. It's like, especially in religion. Yeah. It's very, it's like exactly. sexual it's deviation. Yeah. yeah. Like it's it like, no, no, anything. no. I actually have a very pure relationship to children. Yeah. I want to yeah. teach and I ultimately want kids myself. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. like yeah, totally. That yeah. it's like, it's like, and, and kind of in recent years, kind of waking up to that and be like, Oh my God. And then being like, and then I missed all these opportunities to like in, in the kind of sweet spot where you're kind of young and dumb yeah. enough yeah. <laughs> and I mean that like with, yeah. you know it's like I know that it's not as like maybe neat as I'm making it yeah. out to seem but like yeah uh, but I, I there is a really like incredible it's first of all it's never too late and it's, like, never too late. it's never too late. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just want to speak to that idea yes, of like arrested development because time is just like 
heteronormative in general. Yes. <laughs> and yes. just the idea yeah. that like we're going in one direction is like completely absurd. And it's yeah. just like, no, we're like constantly going back to like relive the childhood, to like explore the childhood we never had, to explore yeah. the adolescence we never had. And there's nothing like really hinged on that except I gotta freeze my eggs. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. like yeah. like you can do that at any time and yeah. I just think like fucking in the back seat, sorry, having sex you in the back curse. seat, you okay, really yeah. is like not not adult. Like I totally. think that's so hot and like so, so needed. Cool. And like unfort and like if you're in a marriage and you're not doing that, like I'm sorry for you. Or you know <laughs> what I mean? Like that yeah. truly should be like part of the underpinnings of like your strong marriage. And yeah, yeah. yeah I just think it's just like go there whenever you need to. And I exactly. really relate to that idea of like the desire. Like still, I'm still getting comfortable, of course, with the idea of like desiring and being desired. Yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. Like in a queer way. And I had an extremely rebellious adolescence, like yeah. full of drugs and like insanity, but like with boys, you know? Yeah. yeah. And it was just like, ew, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. So I, I don't really want to like rebel or have this like crazy time, but I do want to sit in that like desire. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I don't yeah. I don't mean to romance or I, I did mean to romanticize like kind of youthful like wildness, yeah. whatever. But mm-hmm. like it, it that is something I keep learning mm-hmm. that it's actually it is pure kind of like false romanticization totally, it's like it yeah. is like you can you can be as wild as you want whenever you mm-hmm. want totally. but it, it's it's the desire part of it it's like you like it is like ultimately i think good for human beings mm-hmm. as a species mm-hmm. to like evolving. at a young mm-hmm. like kind of like malleable age mm-hmm. that it's it's good to learn at a young age that mm-hmm. it's okay to mm-hmm. like like certain people and, totally. and to be desired by them and, and mm-hmm. that you're you know, so it's like that that is one of the challenges of being mm-hmm. queer mm-hmm. is is like you often get kind of taught the wrong thing yeah i totally. think we kind of like crave a normalcy too we're like totally. oh i want a sick like i want to be at home mm-hmm. and i want to like work on that family unit mm-hmm. and anything yeah. outside of that because being gay already feels fringe. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. like, yeah. I can't add any more fringe You're to that. You're trying to get like, back to yeah. this I'm gonna show that yeah. I'm one of like the good upstanding gays. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, you know? right. And like, mm-hmm. trying to be this kind of like model gay that's like, oh, good morning to you, neighbor. A politician. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, in politics. Yes. politician. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> I think this trajectory though that like, that's typically kind of heteronormative of like you go through your rebellious high school years, then you get married, then you yeah. have some kids and like yep. <laughs> life is figured out is so unrealistic because mm-hmm. we're forever, as you were saying, experiencing adolescence and adulthood. Mm-hmm. We're forever like relearning things and gaining confidence and becoming wise. Mm-hmm. And like it's not realistic to like think that you're going to have everything figured out at a certain point in your yeah. life yes. and then that's a closed chapter. And that's just right. another way of like following the flags to like the exactly. right life and you can yeah. do that and end up completely empty. If yeah. you yeah. spend the time and work on yeah. loving yourself and finding your own love. And like, and a, yeah, sorry. No, no, please. And I just think it's so important to be an integrated <laughs> To be like an integrated adult, to keep allowing yourself playtime yes. and, and experimentation, yeah. like got like that's like my true nightmare. Like being adult that an adult that's like I'm just sitting my ways. You know yeah. what I yeah. mean? No, like no, yeah. like yeah. please keep that's experimenting yeah. and yeah. go wild. Absolutely, you know? there's even no with the picket fence and kids. Honestly, yeah, and that. that's what I'm learning is yeah. like make the picket fence a kink. Yeah, <laughs> like Absolutely. it's not like like maybe I don't work in like a kind of club kink yeah. situation. Maybe what I need to do is turn my like full like domestic like turkey ricotta meatball yeah. <laughs> like turn that fantasy into like fucking take the meatball yeah yeah and, totally. and, but like, isn't that what like being queer is all about it's yeah. about yeah. a la carte what works for you Catering and it's not about life. like what is laid in front of you it's yeah. not like, the prefix yeah, mm-hmm. it's not exactly. the prefix, okay? Can't afford that tonight. Um, all right, great. Well, let's move on to our haunted word. And uh, it comes with the sound effect. Get ready, baby. All right. Uh, our haunted word today is prom. Prom. I lied. I lied to you guys. <laughs> no, but, they, but I in post. <laughs> Wait, oh, there it is. Faint? Thank you so much. Faint. Who did that? Um, <sighs> For the it viewers is, at home, there's literally no one in here no operating here. sound. We are Someone in a, banging a, <laughs> an empty Halloween superstore right now. And uh, no. But um, yeah, this is just the section where we talk about uh, passwords. We've had straight acting. We've had the word mm. tankini. <laughs> Anything that would just kind of like jolt yeah, you. Um, yeah. 
So today it's prom. Mm-hmm. Did you guys all go to prom? Yeah. Oh, yes. Unfortunately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I went yeah. to two proms. <laughs> I went to two proms too. Wow. Okay. <laughs> when wow. Did we go together? No. Oh, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I want to hear about your proms. They seem oh loaded. I'm sorry. But I only, mean, no. I mean, oh, no, no. Like, if you want. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's really kind of a... So, I don't know. So, I had this boyfriend in high school. He was a little bit too old to go to prom with me. Oh, so, oh okay. He was 38. Okay. He was 30. He was not 38. <laughs> but he could not go to prom with me. Yeah. Um, so, I went with my friends, my shitty friends in high school. Oof. I don't know. I mean, it was just a really bad look for me that night. I got mm. very drunk. Yeah. Um, I actually, this is extremely embarrassing. I actually blacked out, and we had this house party at a friend's place. And in the middle of the night, I got up to use the bathroom. And the parents of this friend were home. And I lost my way getting back to the couch. Mm. And I got into... <laughs> My friend's parents' bed. <laughs> oh my parents. god, cutie! Yes, that's so, that's so it's intense. like with them, and they were like, "Hey, yes. oh my god, were they mad?" I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> did you spend the night or how no, did, no? I got back to the couch. Somehow. Okay, okay. Oh I don't know what god. happened. That's the- all I know. <laughs> Don't That's know. what I'm like. I want to be a parent. I don't yeah, know what happened. I, I, I would be such shit. a good parent. I would yeah. be like, I'd be like, I would be like, yeah, oh my god, yeah. cutie, literally like they carry you to cool. a gorgeous no. bed. Yeah. They were like those parents who were trying to be cool. They were like, oh, we're cool. We let our kids like drink at the house. Yeah. But like, yeah. they were not cool. Yeah. 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 I mean, Very there is something like sinister ultimately about like. Very sinister. Let's let the kids like yeah. drink at the no. yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, around it's, you. it's better than like driving around. You know, obviously. Yeah. Whole thing was just mortifying. It was awful. I was extremely hungover yeah. for a full 24 oh, yeah. hours. Oof. Yeah, one of those. It was just a really bad look for me oh, and very embarrassing. Did but, you yeah. go? Oh, you didn't go with the date, right? Because you had an old. Oh no, friend, no, yeah, he right? couldn't come. Yeah, yeah. he was. <laughs> he couldn't. He was couldn't not allowed. Come. He was yeah. not allowed. So that was my prom. Damn, yeah. I went yeah. with. I went two years in a row, each with okay. a different church friend. Okay. Uh, Chad one year and Cameron the other. Mm-hmm. Cameron yeah. and Chad. Cameron and Chad. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, it was a really great, completely sober, fun time. Mm -hmm. I ate chicken Alfredo uh, (laughs) before and after. And yeah, it was very pure. Chicken Alfredo. Mm -hmm. Wow. (laughs) I went one year with my best friend, Lindsay, and we like chain smoked. We were like, like I was like a goth and she was like wearing like her like whatever like Von Dutch I don't know whatever (laughs) and like we were like chain smoking and then I was like literally this is grotesque but we like went anyway because we thought we were in like ghost world you know and we like went anyway and then um I danced all night with like the only guy who was like basically out at my high school named Jacinto and he like made my whole night and it was amazing Aww. and we just were like Jacinto. we were like fully just like yeah. <laughs> like on the yeah. dance floor it was so hot and fun amazing Aww. yeah I had like very kind of uh kind of an iconic like gay male prom experience where like I went every year because it was just like I was friends with older girls mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> so like I just like got to go and like dance like crazy yeah and like like all four years literally all four wow. years oh he, he wins <laughs> I win in the prom yeah. wow yeah like I think you know the word was out I could dance mm-hmm. and um, <laughs> people knew people knew at that point um, but no but it was it, that was it was so fun. Like dancing too. Dancing was revolutionary for me, mm, as yeah. I'm sure it was for you. Like, oh man, like just the safety. It's my language. It's my language, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and it's like a my. It's kind of my non. It's non-sexual for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, totally. No, I get like, it. And and a, a kind of project for me actually recently has been like to allow sexual energy into mm-hmm. dancing. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Do you feel like it's sensual though? Because I feel like you're a sensual dance. Like you're. Yo, in your yes. Body. Oh, I feel you're so in body. my body. But, but I know what you mean. Like it's partnering. It's not transactional. Right. Like, it's yeah. not like when I'm dancing, it's not about like communicating sexual desire, like mm-hmm. in hopes of then like, mm-hmm. not that that's what dancing is for everyone, mm-hmm. but like it can that's, be, it can be yeah. especially in like a kind of bar club situation. Yeah. But like dancing for me as a kid, like mm-hmm. was, it was sensual. It, it was like a safe sensuality yes. and it was like community and like, yeah. it was me and my best friends just Aww. like, mm-hmm. you know. Showing expressing off, expressing yourselves, ah, showing off, yeah, expressing ourselves, showing off our moves for each other, like, and that's what prom was. Prom was like Aww. heaven. It was like it was pure, like safe, like yes. friendship, all just love. like going all out. 
Oh my god, I yeah. love it. So cute. It was so and that is that like for those first like the experimentation of like loving your body. Like yeah. you know what totally, I mean totally. in that yeah. moment and being yeah. like oh, I'm well, hot. What's crazy is the the specific <laughs> denomination of church that I grew up in dancing wasn't allowed. I can't with that. Church that is it's like so a literal footloose evil to uh, me. Nazarene. Hmm. Where did you grow up again? I grew up in Southern California. Okay. In uh, like Temecula area if you know where that is. I well I grew up in San Diego. Nope. Oh yeah, so right. So I know right. yeah. Yeah, Riverside County okay but uh yeah and uh, so I'm like when I look back on that I'm like oh my god I'm so like divorced from my body and like yeah uh, like moving feels really like foreign and it took so long to feel like in my (laughs) body you're a good dancer get out of you are (laughs) no I'm not um it takes a lot for me to dance yeah you are a good dancer don't do this to me either I saw you last week (laughs) dancing on the floor uh I was I was writhing oh Um, my Gosh. Yeah, no, I I do love to dance now, but having that in my like makeup and in yeah. my memories of like don't dance, we don't have dances. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. thank God my parents similarly were pretty lax, and so mm-hmm. it's like I still got to go to school dances even mm-hmm. though yeah. like no one else in our church was supposed to go. Wow. That yeah. is insane. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? That, wow. really I'm crazy. just like, that is depriving someone of like, expression. and oh, Yeah, of like, honestly, I, I, I like, that's like a yeah. cardinal sin. That's like sin. so, yeah. Yeah. like talk about a major red flag. Like, yeah. 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 It's so innocent. It's, like you were, it's yeah. just movement. It's just yeah. fun. It's just like, I'm trapped in this vessel for God knows I mean, how long. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, yeah. let me dance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're not even allowing me to like, look at my body and go you know yeah, like yeah. I, I just yeah well i have my, this like mind. kind of secret fantasy of doing some sort of a like queer prom yeah where like it like county wide all the queer people can go to this and it's like an all because prom is so binary so straight yeah. like corsage and whatever and i don't i honestly don't know a single person who went with the same sex partner to prom because it's yeah. just too yeah. early for it's like our early. generation it feels mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i wonder what the kids are doing now though i, feel I like would they're changing love it to up know. Mm-hmm. yeah i know high schoolers now are just i see them and i'm like whoa they're <laughs> so <laughs> cool so they're cool. so cool i'm like i Fully. wish i know so it fills me with so much hope it's honestly. so cool gorgeous i just taught at moma last year mm-hmm. like i did the oh, teen yeah. program mm-hmm. and i like taught a bunch of teens and like literally it was like truly months after I came out. You know what I mean? And yeah, I was like yeah. hanging out with these teens. I was like, um, and they were like, like, because they're just so cool and they're so in themselves they're so and cool. they're just like, yeah, I mean, uh, I have no preference about like my pronouns or whatever. Or you, and I was just like, so what? You know? And like, they're all just like so exploratory and like rooted and grounded. And I was like, I, I just came out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it just yeah. made me feel like very behind yeah, or something yeah. like more than I already Weird, was, though. but they were such good teachers for me too. Yeah. Like I was their teacher, but I like learned so much from oh them. My gosh, it totally. was crazy. My yeah. little sister is 18 and she goes to Mills, which is a little women's Oh, college. Mills is Aww. so cool. Up in the Oakland Hills. I love Mills. She's, you know, like in this cool little environment, but she's so like, for years now, she's been so cool and like putting me to shame. Like, <laughs> you know, yes. you should have composted that some up. Like a oh women's college in it. Oakland. Oh my yeah. God. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. I'm so jealous. Oh, yeah. That's so cool. It's right. so cool. We will move on to, with our last time, um, these questions. We've read a few of them ahead of time. Time. Uh, so let's just hop right in. Yeah. Cool. Right. We got this gorgeous one about Arrested Development. Don't shame yourself. Okay. Go yeah. for it. Yeah. Fuck someone in a car today. Exactly. Yeah. Do it. You're not behind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's no behind. There's exactly. And by the way, those friends who are settled down are like boring. Absolutely at night are like jerking off to thoughts of like yeah. being in a car. <laughs> yeah. Will, like will be car. divorced in T minus yeah. three and a half years. <laughs> yeah. 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 When you yeah. close yeah. your Fence. eyes and scream silently. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Our uh, second question is, how do I stop being too afraid to hold my boyfriend's hand in public? How do I get comfortable with PDA in general? Mm-hmm. I'm not a conservative, or I'm not in a conservative city, but I'm still in the South, LMAO. <laughs> Man, mm-hmm. I, f- I feel that. Yeah, my totally. first like, my first like real relationship, which was by the way very kind of short, but it was like monumental. Sophia knows all about it. Mm-hmm. Sophia like truly coached me out of like insane grief Aww. after her, truly. Oh, that's um, so sweet. But like that was th- that was like the first really. I, I it was so important for me because it was the first time I had ever like 
really let someone like be yeah. like tender with me yeah. And, yeah. and then like I felt safe to give the tenderness back and it was like it, in in our kind of private sphere we were so like it was so good mm -hmm. like because yeah. we were we really were like in solitude being like Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like, and it was it was so so nice. And then I had such trouble, yeah, being tender in public. Mm. And like, I at that point was fully like a very out, mm -hmm. flamboyant comedian. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was like mm -hmm. doing jokes on like television about mm -hmm. anal. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like it was such a weird disconnect where I was like, I was like Bette Midler mm -hmm. to the world to mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys know me. <laughs> yeah, um, we all think that. Yeah, we all. Yeah, um, you know, it's like I was, I was like, so gay, mm -hmm. but this, what is a, well, you know, this huge part of the kind of gay experience, which is like, you know, desire, attraction, mm -hmm. ten, whatever. It's like I, I felt so, I felt so disconnected, and I, I felt terrified. I felt, yeah. I felt brave as a performer, as an artist, but as a person, I felt very, very scared holding my boyfriend's hand in public mm -hmm. and it yeah. was awful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's just exposure. I don't know if I actually have any mm -hmm. advice, but just a, hey, that's a totally normal mm -hmm. like problem. I think yeah. it is normal. I think you're right. I think it just takes getting used to it and just being mm -hmm. like, you know what? Cause I felt a similar. So my first girlfriend was first year of college and I was like really close with like everyone in my dorm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they were all like very like giving me the side eye because I like when I met them I had a boyfriend but it was just like never really that convincing like they were just kind of like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. always kind of giving me this like okay yeah mm -hmm. sure um, and like so I started dating this girl and she'd be like can I come over and I was always like oh let's just go to your place because she like lived off campus and was like mm -hmm. a year older and I would go to her place and it was like this wonderful like mm -hmm. explorative like just very like oh I feel so like tender towards this person I yeah. felt so like for the first time myself mm -hmm. um, and then we would come back to campus and I would be so weird about it because mm -hmm. I was so afraid that like mm -hmm. my immediate friend group would abandon me. Mm -hmm. And I think too, like growing up maybe in the closet, I don't know if you guys can relate to like feelings of feeling creepy or yes. a feeling, <gasps> do you know what I mean? Totally. Yes, of course. At, a, at a sleepover, at a pool party. Predatory. Totally. Yeah, because you, you worry that like your friends are suddenly going to be like, oh, oh my like, God. she has She's a crush on me. This is the me. bachelorette like, party. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, you're like I, thinking, <laughs> you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yes, yes yeah. Totally. yeah, you're afraid of like this perception from other people. Yeah. So I really kept it on the low. Mm -hmm. And then I think what you're saying, like, I agree with, like, at a certain point, it was like, easing into the deep end of the pool mm -hmm. like yeah. just trying new things and like mm -hmm. eventually I had a lip ring and I was mm -hmm. like, Fuck yeah. <laughs> like yeah totally <laughs> you know like I'm here and I'm queer yeah, yeah. yeah. so you know anyway. I was at this bachelorette party that Ali mentioned last summer and it like came out like yeah. or it was just like anyway yeah, like my sweetie right now and like yeah and all the girl like literally who are like I work at Amex what do you do you know yeah. like, yeah. I was like uh, I'm a performance artist um, <laughs> yeah. but it was like came out that I, I had just come out basically yeah. and they were all suddenly like oh. <laughs> you know they were all kind of like oh okay. like should i change oh. in front of you or like yeah. you know like literally that was the As vibe adults. yeah wow you know? and i was just like i'm not like a hungry like <laughs> yeah. i was like I, as though i would want to date like a, any of a, you a yeah. visa executive <laughs> like from hell like literally stephanie like say good night you know what i mean like i am not interested in who you are whatsoever yeah, isn't it it's always um, the people that it's like laughable that you would be into them oh, that yeah. are like don't laugh yeah. You know, you're like, like, like these like, old men that are like, a gay man tried to touch me. It's like, yeah. no, he didn't. No, yeah. no, he didn't. He was reaching. That just didn't happen. You. Totally. <laughs> I, oh, sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> I want to speak to the PDA thing though yeah. because I feel I like I was repressed for so long, mm -hmm. like in relationships with men too, where I was like, I don't do PDA. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah. get off of me. You know, yeah. like, and I was like, no, like we don't even make eye contact in public honestly <laughs> you know and then like being with queers and just being like oh and then 
truly like not being able to like stop stop yeah no. and then just the deep pride that I feel yeah. like in public where I'm just like, <sighs> yeah, no, like I don't give a shit yeah. you know what I mean and it's like yeah like I will like fuck all you up like yeah. this, you know? no yeah. that's that's what's happened for me was like I just had to like reframe it a little bit I had yeah. it was like I was like oh I'm actually Pr- proud. Yeah. It's like, it's proud. Like through PBA, yeah. that's where I like actually finally understood the concept of pride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I don't know. I, and and if if it helps you, like maybe think of like what, how like amazing it is when you see people mm-hmm. that are comfortable giving it when you see queer yes. people on the street like being mm-hmm. affectionate when you see on a plane on a train you know yeah. on a plane on a train on, on a plane a on a hot yeah. air balloon <laughs> <laughs> um, like you know it's like think how like li- like exciting that is to see and like know that you can like be that for other people yeah you blaze totally. that trail yeah, yeah. Blaze, blaze the trail blaze like, that exactly. clear trail totally like, with your tongue is, <laughs> yeah blaze that trail with your tongue honey I think I think PDA, I think it's honestly, it sounds like if you're coming from a place of like, is this okay? You know, like yeah. that's the fear when you're out in mm-hmm. public. You're like, is this okay? And mm-hmm. you're worrying too much about what other people will say. And I feel like you're able to be so intimate when it's just the two of you. Cause I had the same thing mm-hmm. because I'm like learning that it's okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe yeah. it just takes a little bit more time of yeah. like fostering mm-hmm. that. Give yourself Space that's so and true. Time yeah. To where you know it's okay, and mm-hmm. now it doesn't that's matter. That's so true. You know, totally. that the yeah, I mean, if you're scared, like, it's no, that's you okay. shouldn't push yourself. Yeah, it's there's okay no, too, like, in you know? five weeks, yeah. you'll be holding hands. Step you know? two. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, totally. I mean, if it is your first queer relationship, that's that's so accurate because yeah. you're like in this space where you're like, oh, like I'm like I'm finally like acting on these things that I've like wanted to, I've felt this way for a while, and I'm finally like. I found this connection with mm-hmm. someone. Mm-hmm. And you're so um, starved, so you're like, you're I'm like, making oh. out in private, like, that's enough for me. Yeah, yeah. you're like, that's I what I need. To be I got my dose. <laughs> <laughs> I got my queer vitamin. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But there's always well. sometimes part of me that's like, oh, yeah, like, Oh, is that guy following us? Or like, oh, yeah. or like, oh, yeah, we just got to look. And But then I'm just kind of like, and what you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And then I like my fierce Aries moon comes out, and I'm just like, and what? Like and what? what? Yeah. You know? totally. What did you just say? Yeah. You know, or whatever it is. Oh my god! Yeah. I know. I'm like in a stage right now with like my boyfriend where it's like, I am like on trains and stuff. I'm, I'm like. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> like as people come in, I'm like, I dare you. What? Literally yeah. what? Yeah, it's the best. I love what? it. I love it. Um, all right, great. The, and I'm 31, are... so just know that you know. Different it's just time. Just head on the shoulder. <laughs> time. It's like I'm so like, benign what? and sweet. <laughs> and it feels so radical. It's so benign. <laughs> okay, I run a queer student. Alliance? Alliance, thank you. Mm-hmm. I run a queer student alliance. I can't read. <laughs> this is when it, it was a tricky out. one for okay. me. Too. I pre read the cards. I run a QSA at my high school, but I'm really struggling to find stuff that's fun because my idea of a good time is spending half an hour reading and that doesn't translate well in a group setting. <laughs> mm-hmm. Please tell me fun ideas or something like that. I hope everyone is happy and healthy. Thanks. Thank you. So Aww. sweet. QSA, were you guys in QSA ever? Are you we kidding? Had a GSA. No, I was we on did drugs have a like okay. by myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, the my G- school. Oh, sorry. You, uh, bur- no, my <laughs> I, there's no way I could join the the gay student oh, union course, yeah. because like, are you kidding me? You know, yeah. I wasn't there yeah, yet yeah. enough yeah. to be yeah. an ally. I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What were you gonna say? Well, we had a GSA that like when I was a freshman, like the senior started. Like it was like the seniors that I had crushes on. Yes. They mm-hmm. started it, so like my friends and I like went like and literally not out of any sort of like mm-hmm. activist impulse, like fully just for the crush. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then we like took it over when they graduated again just to impress them. Yes. We're, they were like, <laughs> we're, we're all graduating of course, so, like some, and we were like, we would like to take over, thank you. <laughs> and like, That's and amazing. then and then they graduated and we like ran the GSA and we we're like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of playing. We, like, really, yeah, we were like, so we just started ha- like it, we, it would be like during the meetings were during lunch like every week mm-hmm. and it was just like me and my friends and we would just talk shit yes. <laughs> like we were like yeah. we tried we'd be like okay so the AIDS walk is this week and then like that was like the fir- like the first week and then the le- the rest of it was just like do you want to watch like what I would suggest is like watch movies watch queer movies oh, yes. like watch queer movies 
Please. I have an amazing watch list movies. Yes. Yeah. that I will post on yes. my Instagram yes. Yes. of like dyke movies. But I'm a cheerleader. So it's a great oh. one. I oh think my god, we watched that in my QSA. Yes. Oh, that's great. I literally just yeah. watched that. It's, it's so sobbing. good. Yeah. It is it's so. You got to keep it interesting though, because I feel like I've been in some. I've been in two: one GSA, one QSA. My high school GSA was not very memorable. Mm -hmm. It was also like a little bit, for the stage I was at, mm -hmm. it was a little bit too like loud for me. Because mm -hmm. I was kind of testing the waters and there was like six people in the groups. So I just, I don't know, I attended infrequently. Yeah, yeah. Um, my QSA was sometimes cool. Mm -hmm. Like that movie night was cool. Yeah, movie night for sure. It was sometimes a little bit dry. I think yeah. we could have maybe like bumped up the activities a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a little bit like we yeah, but like it was it was important though just to have it. And I think like anyone particularly if you're like on a college campus and someone's like new to coming out, it's like really cool to have like that space. Totally. totally. And just to meet people yeah. and like just know that like you have a space that you can go to. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is enough to just offer community. Even it's if so you're just important. Eating, talking, even if you're not directly talking mm -hmm. about yeah. queer issues. It's like just like mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that space being open to people. It's so yeah. cool. Radical. I mean, we would have like discuss <laughs> we would have like Everyone would go around in a circle and talk about their experience, how they identify, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah. it was important. So yeah. I'm sure whatever you're doing is already good yeah, enough. Yeah, the space like, enough is great. I yeah. think movies are a great one. Probably yeah. any like marches or if totally. you find yourself going to, you know, protests or, or something. Book like club. That. Totally. This person likes reading. Yes, book exactly. Club. Don't yeah. Yeah. Gay book book reading. Reading. Get a cool gay book club. Keep yeah. reading also. Yeah. 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 I'm so jealous that yes. you read. <laughs> <laughs> My college, we had like a drag ball every oh, year, cool. which was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was really fun. So like you can like get all done up together and then like do some kind of contest. Yeah. 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 Cute. It's fun. I love that idea. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. And like so it. that the dance party isn't just like yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's like you know a little more entertaining like and, and interactive. Ice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last question. The Westboro Baptist Church is planning to protest in my area soon. In your opinion, is it useful to uh, counter protest a hate group or should we ignore them slash let them fizzle out? Hmm. Well, we were talking about this earlier. Yeah. Uh, there's a, a great Louis Theroux documentary, this like British hunk <laughs> investigative journalist who did a, a really, his like most famous episode, I think, is the Westboro Baptist Church episode where he goes uh, and like hangs out with them for quite a while. Yeah, I think it's called America's Most Hated Family yes. or something like that is what yes. it calls them. Yeah. And it really does a good job. I, I, I don't have an answer for the question, but I feel like you should watch this because it does a really good job of kind of humanizing them, which will, which both can kind of increase maybe the need to like stand up to them, but also might let you kind of see the yeah feel at least a little like, empathy. Yeah, but I think of, it's important to mention how he like talks yes to them, yes he right? like so he's very kind of like his what he does kind of in like all of his journalism he's very kind of just like plays the fool and is kind of flirtatious. Mm -hmm. and I love like, it. He's like a charmer, with them. and so yeah. he makes people feel very <laughs> safe and they become very forthcoming. But like what he does with this family, especially like the kind of teenage daughters, is he's just kind of like a sweet, charming guy who's like listening to them for the first time. Ever. Oh my god! They've like mm -hmm. never had male attention. Oh my mm -hmm. god! And like, and they're just like, it's so funny <laughs> and so sweet watching them try to like stick to their like. They're like, now gay people are going to hell, but they're like starting like a smile <laughs> creeping oh up on their god. face oh because he's like god. right. They're like, so, they're, like whoa, you know. Mm -hmm. And they're like, they're like, yeah, no, like abortion's wrong. And, like, no, it's like, everyone's yeah. going to hell. It's just, mm -hmm. it's fascinating. Yes. Um, and again, I don't know what that means for it. counter protesting. I don't but know like, what that means at all. Yeah, it's like these are real humans that are so far off base yeah. that I just can't imagine. What that they're means not, like. they're, they don't have a kind of, they're so, their beliefs are actually, what was interesting about it too is like you learn it's not just like, they don't have populist right wing beliefs. They have actually kind of super crazy, complicated, like, 
clunky beliefs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like so they don't they haven't caught on. Their persistence is what's made them famous. Their signs have made them famous. But it's mm-hmm. not a big movement. No. Mm-hmm. Like it's you one know, family, right? It's, it's one like family. Truly, and like a wow. few people who go to their church. They're just like they've become kind of icons, but they mm-hmm. don't have a following. So mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. there is something a little kind of pointless about like the counter protest because they are so cuckoo. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I agree with that. I also think though, like people like that have probably like never met a gay person. Fully. Yeah. yeah. Or like have never. I, I don't know. It's like extremist people like that. It, it's. I think it's like really emotionally draining and like shitty to have to educate people and be like, you suck. Like, this is why you suck. I'm going to educate you. But also like, and I'm not even sure how effective it would be because I think they are just so crazy. Yeah, they're gone. But it is important, I think, to like shed light on people's ignorance and Mm -hmm. to call things out for what they are. I Mm -hmm. will say though, on the tail of that, they're such a like lightning rod, insane belief, mm-hmm. you know, that it's so easy to be like, wow, they're so hateful. Like, how dare they? Yeah. And you could spend a lot of energy like trying to counter protest that. Yeah. But also, maybe just like kind of take a moment and think of the people in your like immediate life that, that you maybe could have spend, like yeah. fringe beliefs or are totally. kind of in yeah. the middle and aren't as tolerant and maybe like call them. I don't know. Yeah. Like, you would have spend more that same time impact. to like have an actual impact. That's actually on the really people smart. That you know. Advice. That's a good Instead idea. Instead of screaming at people who are screaming for an afternoon. Yeah. You know? But I do think that there could be like a personal impact to showing up at a kind of at a thing like that oh, where it's yeah. like to to show up and if your spirit if you really feel like your spirit is moved to show up and mm-hmm. you know and you feel safe enough like with numbers or whatever to yes. just be visible mm-hmm. like yeah. it, like juxtapose like against people like that and yes. just be like we're here we're queer. Like that's yeah. like literally all that's you have to true. say and it could mm-hmm. be really healing too to be like just simply like we're here yeah, we're so Someone's yeah. driving by. Mm-hmm. They're they're carrying their own yeah. kind of self hate, mm-hmm. and they see these protesters that are like, "You're going to hell." Totally. Like yeah. AIDS will kill you. Like they're mo- right. they're insane signs. Yeah. yeah. And then to see the other side of the street has mm-hmm. like we yeah, yeah. protest yeah. with like loving signs. I yeah. Would maybe yeah. say. I mean. Yeah. Or yeah, I don't know. I just think like do it if you feel moved yeah. to. There's yeah. no right or wrong. It's like it's okay if you can't or you don't have the energy or like it seems too scary you know what I mean but like but go if you think that would be powerful for you because there's a lot of power in protest Mm -hmm. there is if you can like take back that I mean also though for some people that's like really draining totally and like could deeply. be really damaging. Yeah. Deeply. Depending on what you're... Be, yeah, it could really be, like, yeah. Yeah. scary and violent. Politically, yeah. already, I do feel at my wits' end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kind of, like, Ugh. And yeah. so, like, just even imagining... One, imagining Westboro, like, what do they, tour? If they're going to be in their town? They're on like, tour. They're, they're like, on in tour. a van? Are they on tour? Oh, my God. Oh my God. God. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, I can't. Yeah. I just, yeah. Just, yeah, That's if you crazy. do go, like, process process it for yourself process afterwards bring yeah. friends like have have numbers let us know follow yeah. us on instagram send me a message of how that went yeah uh send me a photo so i can <laughs> weep <laughs> i think everyone has different ways too of dealing with stuff like that i don't think anyone should be made to feel like they're an armchair activist because totally. they like didn't want to show up or stand next to some crazy people. person totally. or Take like care of yourself yeah they're wrong for you know everyone has their way of of processing and dealing with yeah. all this mm-hmm. kind of stuff it's crazy it's a yeah. crazy world so well i wanted to end this episode a little bit different um with book recommendations because Ooh. we got that question of Ooh. someone who loves to read and i feel like i found so much uh self-love and about myself in reading books so what are do you guys have any mm. book recommendations for the people who watch this show oh, maybe mm. a book that you read in high school i remember i read middlesex Mm. Uh, and uh, it was so good and it's about someone who's intersex and just the work with gender and Mm -hmm. it's just a really well written book Mm -hmm. yeah Um, I think I started that and then like obviously it's it dense. just disappeared yeah it's and huge it's, it's yeah. like there's a bookmark a 30 pages yeah, in really somewhere good. yeah it gets insane at yeah. the end so <laughs> yeah I should finish it <laughs> yeah. um I mean uh a writer that's really close to my heart is Bell Hooks, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, her 
amazing book called Feminism is for Everyone yeah. or Everybody is really good. And it's sort of this like she starts it being like, I just wished someone would finally write a manual about feminism and mm-hmm. no one did. So I guess I'm doing it. And it's like a really just sort of succinct, short book that's like amazing. And it's about, you know, it's like super intersectional and it's a really quick read. So I recommend that. And then her book All About Love, mm-hmm. too, which really Very is just important. like you recommended that when me. you read that, like get prepared, you know, yeah. because you're reading it and you're like, my whole family love was a lie or whatever. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it's, it's really it can be really painful and jarring. But it, I think as you grow um, into your queerness, it's like really useful for how to communicate and love people and love yourself. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um Audre Lorde, Toni Morrison. A- anyway. mm. uh, Toni Morrison, all the way. Yeah. Toni mm-hmm. Morrison. It was just her birthday. I have her Sula tattooed on my oh, face. Oh, hell yeah. Amazing. Yeah. One Aww. of my favorites. That's cute. Yeah. I'm tr- I mean, I, I literally, it's just because I just read them. I like, cannot shake them, but... <laughs> The fucking Elena Ferrante books. Which one? The My Brilliant Friend, the four books, the Italian Neapolitan novels or whatever. They're like huge. They just turned into an HBO series. Oh, cool. But like, it's like one friendship over a life. Like, mm. it's like over the course of a life. It's in four books. And like, it took me literally two years to read the first book. And then once I got to the end of it, I was like, <gasps> mm-hmm. and I read the last three books in like two weeks. Yes. Oh, and they're wow. just like, there's something, I mean, I obviously I know these recommendations don't have to be overtly queer, but like no, totally. there is just like the beauty of like a kind of female friendship, like two women like over time and like, mm-hmm. and, and the intensity of that and the, 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 I don't know. It's just mm-hmm. stunning. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's just beautiful uh-huh. writing. And it, to me it was like, I just needed them to be, be, to become enchanted with reading again like you like mm-hmm. cannot put them down oh that's really Ooh. great and it's also about like that. women who like in like you know the 60s are in like kind of impoverished Italy are mm-hmm. like doing everything they can in their own ways to educate themselves to mm-hmm. transcend their circumstances Ooh. and it, it takes on this meta quality as you're reading it where you're just like I, I want to read too I want to learn too I want to you know it's yes. like it makes you really hungry Oof. for knowledge wow. like in a really really beautiful way oh, and that beautiful. was I just found them to be just like absolutely stunning and now I'm like Oh, checking my phone a little bit less <laughs> <laughs> because of those books slightly slightly just yes. slightly <laughs> Um, anything by Zadie Smith, oh, anything yeah. by Toni Morrison. I love just her. De- their depictions of just like their lead characters and the strength that comes with that. Um, coming back into, I think our second question about like coming into, or our first question about coming into like queer adolescence and expressing that. I just started reading "Opening Up" by Tristan Terramino. Mm-hmm. That's a good one mm-hmm. on just like catering and like designing your relationships mm-hmm. oh, um, and like redefining them. Mm-hmm. So mm. cool, nice gay I've read. Good things about that. Yeah. yeah, I haven't read. Yeah, I've, I've been, I it's just like started the non-monogamy it, like manual. It's kind of cool, yeah. Ooh, but I think fun. even outside of that, mm-hmm. I think like just gay relationships kind of like cater themselves. Mm-hmm. And I think as a queer person, you have to like find what works for you. Totally. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Oh, love it. All right. Well, cool. enjoy reading, everybody. Happy Thank you. Bye. Thank you for another week. And yes. we'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> Bye.